Um, hello, everyone. For those who don't know me, I'm Jewel, a newbie, a new disciple of Verwin Day. We are still in the meaningful and beautiful series of Easter. I hope you're enjoying and cherishing the fruit of Easter. How are you for the past week? As we have heard on Sister Cecil's guideline last week about our capacity to listen, hear, and discern what God is saying to us. And for tonight's guideline, I would like to ask you a question. How do we believe? How do you believe? Tita Willie, how do you believe? Atiment, how do you believe? You and I, we as human beings, have this logical, reasonable mind that always curious, ask, and checking the facts. For example, you're asked to go to this never heard place with no explanation on why and how. Like Cheryl, you go to Timbuktu. Hearing something unfamiliar, or if we are in doubt or unsure of, we will tend to ask, question, and search. And type in Google for its meaning, what it is, and where it is. The answer would not always be yes. There will be hesitation, mind-boggling, and thinking not just twice, but maybe hundreds or a thousand times. This what happened when other disciples said in John 20, verse 25, we have seen the Lord, but Thomas said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his wound and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. So we can see here that Thomas looked for proof and evidence before believing. He needed assurance. If you were Thomas, would you have the would you have the would you have done the same thing? Would you have said the same words? Would you search first for evidence? before believing in something unbelievable? Would you have similar reaction? In John 20, verse 26, a week later, Jesus came and appeared to Thomas. Then Jesus said to Thomas, put your hands, reach out your hand, and put it into his side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God, in this scenario, Jesus answered the doubts of Thomas. He appeared in front of his very own eyes and let him heal his wounds. This is a common storyline that first we have to use our senses before believing. The sense of seeing, hearing, smell, and touch before we believe in. You, how do you believe in Jesus? The resurrected Jesus? and the risen Christ. How do you believe in him? His promise of salvation, the fruit of Easter, that someday we will be with him in paradise. We may, may we always be reminded on the beautiful meaning of Easter in our daily life and believe in him completely. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, that is why we labor and strive because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, and especially of those who believe. I have been at Thomas several times. In a situation where works are piled up, various things to do, multiple webinars to attend, meeting the deadline of project submission, different engagement, a friend who is in down moment, a cousin who is in financial crisis, long duty hours in the hospital, and clinic in between. Lord, bakit naman po sabay-sabay? Why all at the same time? Pagod na po ako. I'm losing control. Kaya po pa po ba to? Can I survive this hectic week? I was one with Thomas during that time. I asked, I questioned, 
I hesitated. I doubted. How about you? What are you carrying in your heart that is giving you lots of uncertainty and anxiety? Try to stop and identify what is in your life that is causing you to fear. Many times, we fail to recognize Jesus in our lives because we may be too busy, too preoccupied with many things, many tasks and responsibilities. It is hard to, for the disciples to recognize Jesus in the time of resurrection. Their eyes were closed, their hearts were closed. Despair and disappointment and even failures and guilt have blinded them from recognizing the Lord in their midst. But Jesus is so patient. He comes to them one by one to rescue their gaze, their feet. This Easter, Jesus is coming after us. In our daily routines, he is trying to get our attention. In Isaiah 40, verse 31, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Maybe many of us experience this challenge and struggle every day. The doubt and hesitation in ourselves, in Jesus. I forgot that it is only by the grace of the Lord that I will be sufficient, capable to do all of this. When I am in full of emotion and my mind is full of random thoughts, I pause and feel the moment, being aware of the moment. I would quiet myself and inhale and exhale. It is in the calmness and stillness that I heard Jesus' voice. And Jesus said, Jewel, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. It is only peace that I can now stop doubting and have confidence in myself that I can do it through my faith and trust in God. This peace that I felt blew away my fears, anxieties, and worries. With this peace, I was given the strength and courage to go on and move on. In this peace, I am calmed down. The escalating, the ranging emotions inside me. It is in prayer that I find peace. It is, it is my dialogue with the Lord and the connection with Him that I find solace, peace of mind, and heart. According to dictionary, peace is freedom from disturbance, tranquility. It is state of period in which there is no war or war has ended. Without peace, it would be a chaos. Can you imagine what happened in the war between Ukraine and Russia? Many children and women have to leave their homes and go to a safer place, while men stayed and fighting for their country. How about our battle with COVID-19 during the pandemic? the loss of lives of our dear ones, the loss of jobs, and down of economy. There was pain, destruction, suffering, and death that affected the mental health of many that went through grief, despair. They cannot eat well, they cannot sleep well, and cannot do our function as they used to be. Peace is needed in every aspect of our life inner peace within ourselves, peace at home, peace at workplace, peace in the community, peace in our country, especially after the election, peace in the world. I spoke Francis' message on the World Day of Peace last January. In every age, 
Peace is both a gift from on high and fruit of a shared commitment. Indeed, we can speak of an architecture of peace to which different institutions of society contribute and an art of peace that directly involves each one of us. All can work together to build a more peaceful world, starting from the hearts of individuals and relationships in the family, then within society, and within the environment, and all the way up to the relationships between people and nations. How about you? How can you be a peacemaker? To whom you want to make peace with? Jesus is close to those who are brokenhearted, those in suffering and in pain, to those who are in trouble and are in fear. Jesus will always bestow the peace in their hearts. What, whatever we have done, if we have regretted him, disappointed him, taken him for granted, he will constantly greet us with peace, be with you, just like his greetings to the apostles. In John 20, verse 26, though the door were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. What does this peace signify in your life? What is Jesus telling you to peace with? We are the situations you are living right now that makes you feel like you are living behind locked doors where you feel trapped, where you feel you lack freedom and control, where you feel you have no option, no way out. Jesus is here knocking on our locked doors tonight. He wants to become, he wants to come in and fill our hearts with his presence and security. Let me in, will you? Is it so hard for you to believe that I can make things possible for you? Do I really believe in the power of resurrection of Jesus? If we say we believe, then we will exercise more faith and hope that whatever changes, difficulties, challenges in our, day, in our everyday life, Jesus is with us, giving us open ways, open doors, peace, and possibilities. Jesus said to the disciples, Blessed are those who have not seen, yet have believed. Let us ponder on what these words mean. Allow Jesus to speak tonight, to bring peace with his presence, to bring us hope and joy for the new doors of possibilities he will open for us. Dear Lord, thank you for constantly providing the peace we love of and looking for. Grant us the genuine peace of heart and mind. May we share to our brothers and sisters the peace within us and transcend to others. May those who are ye and poor in spirit find peace in midst of divided decisions, opposing principles, and misunderstandings. May we continuously and completely believe in you, that you indeed is resurrected, giving us hope and new beginnings. We also pray for those who are oppressed and experience the inequalities and injustices, to constantly believe in you and trust your will. Amen.